if you've ever included a link to a Google Doc in Gmail and you've seen this pop up, how do you think that actually happens? Gmail and Google Docs are two separate apps, yet there is a permissions check when you're sending the email. Well, for you to understand that, you need to understand Google Zanzibar. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. Zanzibar is Google's centralized, globally distributed authorization system designed to handle fine-grained permissions at massive scale. Instead of each Google service implementing its own permission system, they delegate this authorization checks to Zanzibar. And this ensures consistency across services such as Gmail, Google Drive, YouTube, Photos, etc. And at its peak, Zanzibar actually handles millions of requests per second while enforcing these complex access policies in real time, all with low latency. Now, the good news is Google actually released a white paper, also confusingly titled Google Zanzibar, back in 2019. So this is an explanation as to what happens under the hood. Now, traditional access control lists, or ACLs, or role-based access control work well for small systems, but Google really needed a system that worked consistently across all their products, handled billions of objects with complex access policies, provides low latency and real-time decisions at scale, and also could support Google's global infrastructure without sacrificing performance. So Zanzibar did all this by doing things slightly differently. What they did was they stored relationships rather than permissions explicitly. For example, instead of storing something like Jill can edit some document, it actually stores Jill is in the editors group for some document. And this allows for more flexible policies. So essentially, at its core, Zanzibar models access as a directed graph of relationships between objects. What is an object? Well, an object would be anything like a user or a folder or a document. It uses something called a tuple-based data model where each permission is stored as a tuple and typically includes details about the resource, the relation, and the subject. Here's an example of a relationship tuple. So in this case, a document named SumDoc and the owner of this SumDoc is Jill. In a relation tuple, objects can also relate to other objects. So in this case, we have the group security, which is a direct member of the group engineering. Now let's talk about the data schema and the API and how you actually make checks for permission in Zanzibar. Well, Zanzibar provides a structured way to store these permissions as a tuple, as I mentioned. And here's a more real life example. So in this case, you have a document named some document and you have two readers of the document, Fred and Sean. You have the owner of a document that is Jill, but we also have a dotted arrow from reader to owner to show that owners of a document can also read the document. And just to make things a little more complex, we have an organization here named The Org and we have an admin of The Org named Hannah. And any admin of an organization is also the owner of the document. When a request comes in, Zanzibar essentially evaluates whether a path exists from the user to that requested resource via this appropriate relationship. This graph traversal allows for flexible and scalable permissions management. If you want to see if Jill has a reader relation to some document, you would check if there is a route in this directed acyclic graph from some document to Jill. And in this case, there is a route via the owner relation. So hence, Jill has the reader relation to some document. Now, I'm sure the first question on your mind is, surely this doesn't scale to millions of requests per second? Well, it actually does, and it works at the scale at which Google operates. Now, it does so by optimizing performance using caching and consistency models. One, it uses a distributed sharded data store to store all of these tuples efficiently. Two, it caches previously resolved queries using an LRU cache or a least recently used cache, which avoids redundant work. And three, it ensures bounded staleness, 
meaning clients can actually trade off slight inconsistency for faster responses. And all of these optimizations allow Zanzibar to return decisions in single-digit milliseconds, even under heavy load. Now, here's the good news. You can actually use open source based on Google Zanzibar, such as SpiceDB, to power your authorization systems. Check out github.com slash outset slash SpiceDB to get started. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing and thanks for watching.